So in the second part of this unit, we're going to look in a little bit more detail at how we can format the plot. So as we saw in the last, at the end of the last part, um, that we were able to control things like the marker styles and the colors and the lines um, and so on. And that sort of gives obviously a lot of control over the plot. So we're going to look now at some more of the other basic formatting things you can go and do. And I'll say also we're going to um, come back to uh, ways to get very fine control over how the plots look in later units. So the first thing you might want to go and do is control the size of the plot. Um, so the actual size you get for your plot is controlled by the size of the figure. So this in turn um, can be control controlled by uh, style sheets, which we'll come to a little bit later in this unit, or by setting the what's called the RC params, which we'll cover in a later unit in this series, or by explicitly setting the size when you create the figure. Uh, and in this last case, this is done with a fig size parameter, which you pass into plot.figure. And you give that a tuple of two numbers, which is the um, width and the height that you want the new figure to be. And those are given in inches. So in this case here, I've called plot.figure and I've passed it a fig size of 4.0 and 4.0. So in other words, I've asked for a plot, which is four inches by four inches. Um, and then we've just done the same plot that we're doing again uh, previously. So that's setting the actual physical size of the figure. The other thing you might want to go and do is select what range of data you're actually going to be plotting in the figure, what range of data you're going to show. So in other words, you need to set the limits of the X and Y axes. And this is done with the plot.xlim and plot.ylim functions. And they can be both be used to control the, the full range of the axes that you, you end up plotting. So an example here, again, we're making the same plot as we did before, but I now say I want the X axis to run from three to five with a call to plot.xlim. And I want the Y limits to be from minus one to one to control the Y axis. If I don't, uh, if I call plot.xlim or put plot.ylim without any arguments, then in fact, it'll return the current limits of the X and Y axis back to me. And so I'm able to ask the matplotlib what it's currently using and then decide whether or not I need to go and change it, for example. So in the previous example, you'll see that the legend ended up in the middle of the plot. Um, this is probably not really ideal. By default, when you call plot.legend, it's going to try and guess where the best place to go and put your legend is, but it's not always going to get it um, absolutely perfect. And sometimes you need to manually override that and tell it uh, how to position the uh, legend. And this is done when you call plot.legend with the lock parameter, LOC. So here's an example where I've manually forced the legend um, to go to the upper left, upper right corner. Um, so you see, it's exactly the same plot as we had on the previous example. But now when I call plot.legend, um, it's going to set, I'm manually setting the lock to uh, upper right. Um, you'll see that in the call to my label plots function, I've told it not to plot the legend because I'm going to do that manually because I want to show you how to control where it's positioned. So that uh, lock parameter ends up taking some combination of upper, center, and lower to specify the vertical position, and left, center, and right to specify the horizontal position. Um, and then you don't say center, center. You can just say center um, to get it to appear in the middle. Although, again, it doesn't make a huge amount of sense to me to put your legend in the middle of your plot. Um, or you could just specify best, which is the default. And in that case, matplotlib will try and work out where the, the density of other things it's drawn on the plot is lowest and move the legend to go there. So it minimizes the overlap. It's also possible to specify the number of columns and therefore the number of rows to use in the legend. Of course, that will then go and change the shape of the legend, which in turn will change where matplotlib thinks the best place to put it is. So to set the number of columns to use in your legend, you use the encol 
argument. So again, here is an example um, where I've again made exactly the same plot and put n col equals to four. And now it's going to put the legend at the bottom center, very center, bot uh, yes, bottom center um, uh, location by default, because it's worked out that's the best place for that shape of legend to go. We can get even more control over where the legend goes, and we can also get it to go outside of the, the plot frame altogether. So sometimes you don't want the legend taking up space inside your axis frames, you want it outside. And in order to do that, we have to make use both of the combination of the lock parameter and a new one, which is B bo B box to anchor to. Um, sorry, B box to anchor. Um, uh, not the most memorable of parameter names, it has to be said. And the way these work together is that you use the lock parameter to specify some part of the legends box. So, for example, I can say if I say lock equals upper center, I'm saying, OK, take the top middle edge of the of where the legend is. And then B box to anchor takes two numbers, which gives the X and Y coordinates of where that point on the legend box is supposed to go. And those coordinates are given in terms of the axis frames. So 0, 0 is the bottom left corner of the frame, and 1, 1 would be the top right corner of the frame. So in this example, I'm going to specify B box to anchor to of 0 0.5, so in the middle of the frame, and minus 0 0.1, meaning I actually want the upper center edge of the uh, legend to be outside and below the uh, axis frame by one tenth of the size of the axis frame. Um, and then if you look at the documentation for plot.legend on the matplotlib uh, website, um, it gives you all kinds of a whole list of parameters you can go and play around with. Um, so again, just to give you a little example of the sort of things you can do here, um, I'm calling that legend. I've specified I wanted five columns. Uh, I'm using the lock and the B box to anchor. Um, to set the middle of the upper edge of my box to be in the middle of the axis frame, but below it. Um, and then I've set the um, uh, label color um, uh, to be the same as the line color. So in other words, I'm telling it to make the, the text plot one, plot two, plot three match the color of the line it's using. I've told it face color, which is used to specify the, the fill color of the background of the box, if you like, to be black. And I've asked it to go and give me a shadow as well. Um, and you can see the effect there. Um, if you want to make uh, uh, more um, uh, uh, comprehensive changes to the style of the plot, um, then there's a whole variety of ways you can do it. So you can um, go and do individual control over every single element. But if you want one very quick and easy way of doing this, we can make use of what are called style sheets. So matplotlib comes with uh, quite a few built-in style sheets that define how the various components on your plot should all go and look together. And so you can quickly go and make a uh, make your plot sort of follow a theme, if you like, of a, a kind of visual theme of the style. Um, and it does things like details what figure sizes it should use, the colors, the backgrounds. Um, whether there are grids or not, the line and marker styles to use, and this is all controlled in the style sheet. So to use the style sheet, um, you can make use of context manager. That is a, a with clause. So again, here is an example um, doing that. So you see that very first line, we have a with plot.style.context, and then we give it the name of the style sheet we're wanting to use. In this case, I'm using one called Seaborn. And then there's a colon, because it's a width clause. And then everything else is indented inside underneath that width. And everywhere I've indented it like that, it will make use of the settings that are given by that style sheet when I use those uh, matplotlib commands. And so I'm just doing exactly the same as before. I'm, I'm setting up and making a figure um, and um, uh, defining um, where to put the legend. And you can see the Seaporn style looks very, very different from the, the default style uh, of, of matplotlib. Um, so um, one of the things you can go and do 
uh, say with that with is you can you can use those built-in style sheets you can also define your own style sheets as well um uh, and you can put them uh, store them in the right place on your computer and then they'll be available for you to go and use to get a list of all the uh, plot styles that are available you can call plot.style available um and on the computer i wrote these slides on this is what i have set up as available to me um, what's available on your computer might be slightly different depending on versions of matplotlib or other packages that you've got installed. Um, just to note that the uh, two columns function is one I've defined just to go and give me a nice printout here so that I don't end up with the, um, the list going off the end of the slide. Um, if you're interested in the source code of that, it's a little bit tricky and involved, but it'll be in the um, uh, written version of the notes for these slides. The other thing you can go and uh, do is you can go and switch to the style sheet permanently um, for the whole of your script. In that case, you just call plot.style.use, and after that, it will then use that style sheet you've specified um, until you tell it to use a different one. Um, the other really nice thing you can do with style sheets is you can do what's called composing them. That is, you can mix and match them by specifying more than one style sheet at a time. So, for example, in this case here, I've again used the uh, plot.style.context in a with clause, but now I've specified I want the dark background style, the notebook style, and the bright style. And these work together to quite substantially change how the plot looks. So obviously the dark background, I guess it's fairly obvious what it does, is it sets the background of everything to be black, um, and therefore sets things like the colour of the frame and the text to be a light color. Um, then um, the notebook style is changing the um, font sizes and the line widths of the plot to make it um, uh, uh, a bigger font and a, a darker line. Um, it also changes the figure size and I've had to manually override that in order to make sure that the figure fitted on the slide. And then finally the bright style is changing the colours of the lines uh, to what's called the bright palette, which I think works better when you're using a black background. Um, and so by mixing and matching the style sheets, you can, again, fine tune how you want that style to work. Another really handy thing with uh, Matplotlib is you can make use of LaTeX inside it. So, um, what you can do is you can you can switch on um, LaTeX when you come to uh, do things like uh, access labels or titles um, or legends. Anywhere where you put text in, you can just use LaTeX. All you have to do is just start is wrap your LaTeX code with dollar signs. Um, and there are a couple of little things you have to watch out for. So one is that if you happen to be using an F string, um, well, F strings will understand curly braces to mean something as a placeholder. Um, see the first video in the strings uh, video tutorials. Um, and of course, LaTeX uses lots of curly braces for um, specifying the arguments to commands and so on. So um, if you want to use the curly braces for your LaTeX command, you have to double them up. So you end up with double curly braces all over the place. Uh, and then the other thing is that, of course, lots of LaTeX commands use a backslash character. Um, and um, that gets interpreted as a, as a marker for a special character in uh, Python, unless you make it a raw string by putting a label R. Um, alternatively, you have to double up the, um, the backslashes. Um, but notwithstanding those slight complications, it's very, very easy. So here, for example, you can see I've simply gone and labeled all the plots um, with a bit of LaTeX code that goes and gives um, the phase angle that was being used. Um, uh, and so you can see I've just, uh, in the label for each plot, I've gone F and R. So this is an F string, which is also a raw string. So it's a raw string, so I don't have to double up the backslashes. It's an F string because I want to refer to my counter variable IX in the string I produce. Um, and so I'm able to just, as I say, wrap the LaTeX in uh, uh, dollar signs and it goes off and produces um, some nicely formatted, look, nicely looking mathematical symbols. 
Another thing that is quite common you need to go and do is to add some extra text labels to your plot to point out some features or to sort of add some comment onto the plot. Um, and this you can do with the plot.annotate uh, functions. So here's again is a very, very simple example. We've just plotted out a single set of data and then I've called plot.annotate and I've given it a label and I've given it a set of x, y coordinates. Um, and those are by default the coordinates in the um, terms of the data. So I've asked it to put something in at 1.1 times pi and zero. And I've previously checked that 1.1 uh, pi is a um, root of the data function I've actually plotted out. Um, and so I've labeled that uh, point with my uh, annotation label. Um, and that's all great. Um, uh, if I want to go and specify my coordinates in terms of the location on the axis frame or on the figure frame, then there's an x, y coords parameter that lets me tell uh, the annotate function what coordinate system I'm using for where I specify my coordinates. But by default, it'll specify the it in terms of the data coordinate. And that kind of seems sensible because probably you're using annotation to point out some feature about your data. Of course, one of the problems with that previous plot is it's not actually very obvious which data point I'm trying to point to there, um, because although the text is nicely positioned on it, somebody just looking at that plot wouldn't really kind of be obvious to them that it was the bottom left corner of the A that was the important point I was trying to refer to. And so it would be better if I could go and draw an arrow to show exactly where that was needed. Um, and this is how you go about doing that. So it's the same as we had before. Um, but now I've done two things. I've specified an x, y text um, parameter, and that's specifying the coordinates where the text should appear. So in other words, I've moved the annotation label away from the data point and positioned it somewhere convenient. And I've added an arrow props, which is a dictionary, um, which goes and defines some information about how the arrow should look. Um, and in this case, I've just done two things. I've told it that it should be a... Um, uh, I don't know how you'd call that, a uh, not a closed triangle, um, uh, a chevron uh, arrowhead. Um, and I've also said I want the connection style um, to be this one that's built in called angle three, which um, makes me have a nice little arc to my arrow. If I didn't specify that connection style, I just get a straight line, which is fine. I mean, that, that's, that's perfectly acceptable, but um, maybe the arrow looks slightly nicer. And again, if you look at the matplotlib, uh, documentation that gives a whole big long list of uh, all the various things you can do to specify your arrow and there are many 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 things you can go and do to change how those arrows look. Um, if you just want a, a general text comment without uh, referring to a specific point you can also use plot.text um, and uh, if you use plot.text, it takes its arguments in a slightly different format. It takes the x coordinate, the y coordinate, um, and then the string you want to plot, um, compared to annotate, which took the string you wanted to plot, and then a tuple of the x and y coordinates. Uh, plot.text takes the uh, x and y coordinates separately and takes them before it takes the, uh, the string to plot. Um, and so I've just put down a general comment uh, sort of loosely in the, the lower uh, right quadrant of that plot. Um, you've got quite a lot of control over it. So, um, uh, for example, here um, I've gone and added some extra control, extra parameters to my text function. So I've told it what family I want. Um, so I'm using Comic Sans MS, which is that sort of primary school cartoony type font. I've given it a font size and told it to make the font size nice and big. Um, I've also made it red. And then I've specified a box to go around the font. And I've specified a whole bunch of things about that box as well. So I've said it should be um, a rounded corner box style. Um, I've specified a color for the edge. I've specified a color for the, the, the fill of it, the, the middle of it. And I've also, with the alpha parameter, said that it should be the, the, the background box should be 50% transparent. So you can see the data still sort of coming through behind it. 
And again, if you look on top the matplotlib documentation, then you'll see there's a huge range of different parameters you can use to control exactly how things look.